uncovered. Over the years, the FBI has handled millions of cases since it was first implemented, but not all cases are equal. Today, we will be going over some of the most notorious criminals the FBI wishes the world would forget. 20. Carl Coral Eugene Watts Carl Eugene Watts, known as Coral, was a notorious serial killer in the United States. Born on November 7, 1953, in Colleen, Texas, he was raised by his mother after his parents divorced when he was just a toddler. Despite struggling academically, Watts managed to maintain satisfactory grades. A bout of meningitis at age eight set him back a year in school. Watts is believed to be one of the most prolific serial killers in U.S. history, with a killing spree that spanned eight years. His victims were primarily white women, including Gene Klein, a news reporter who fell victim to Watts on Halloween night. His M.O. involved abducting, torturing, and ultimately taking the lives of his victims. He used various methods to carry out his gruesome acts. For example, he used a screwdriver on Jean Klein and drowned Linda Tilly in her apartment complex's swimming pool. Law enforcement apprehended Watts on May 23, 1982. He confessed to the murders of 13 individuals, but it's suspected that the actual number of victims could exceed 100. Watts passed away from prostate cancer while serving two life sentences without the possibility of parole in a Michigan prison for the murders of Helen Dutcher and Gloria Steele. 19. Thomas Joseph Capano. Thomas Joseph Capano, a former Delaware Deputy Attorney General and disbarred lawyer, was born on October 11, 1949. He hailed from a well-known family of real estate developers and building contractors in Delaware. Over the years, he built a successful career as a lawyer, state prosecutor, Wilmington City Attorney, legal counsel to Governor Mike Castley, and political consultant. In 1994, while working as a partner at the Wilmington office of Saul Ewing LLP, he began an affair with Anne Marie Fahey, the appointment secretary to then Governor Tom Carper. Despite being a married father of four daughters, Capano separated from his wife Kay in 1995. Fahey was last seen on June 27, 1996, after having dinner with Capano in Philadelphia. Her family reported her missing three days later. The FBI joined the search in July, and a federal grand jury heard evidence for over a year. Capano was arrested for Fahey's murder in November 1997, more than a year after her disappearance. Despite the fact that Fahey's body was never found and the cause or manner of her death could not be established, prosecutors alleged that Capano murdered Fahey at his rented house and disposed of her body in the Atlantic Ocean with his brother Jerry's help. On January 17, 1999, Capano was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to death by lethal injection. This marked the first time in Delaware's history that a person was convicted of murder without a body or murder weapon. His sentence was later commuted to life imprisonment without parole. Capano passed away on September 19, 2011, at age 61 at the Vaughan Correctional Center near Smyrna, where he was serving his life sentence. 18. Ghislaine Maxwell Ghislaine Maxwell, born on Christmas Day in 1961, is a British socialite turned convicted sex offender. She is the daughter of Robert Maxwell, a British media tycoon, and Elizabeth Maxwell, a French-born Holocaust researcher. Maxwell grew up in Oxford and attended Balliol College, Oxford, becoming a well-known figure in London's social circles. In the 1980s, she worked for her father's business until his death in 1991. She then relocated to New York City and became a fixture in the city's social scene. During this time, she began a relationship with financier Jeffrey Epstein, who was later convicted as a sex offender. In 2012, she established a non-profit organization dedicated to ocean conservation. However, her life took a dramatic turn in July 2020 when she was arrested by U.S. federal authorities. She was charged with crimes related to the sexual exploitation and trafficking of underage girls, stemming from her association with Epstein. Due to concerns about her potential to flee, she was denied bail. In December 2021, she was found guilty on five of six counts, including sex trafficking of a minor. She's also facing a second trial for perjury related to Epstein's abuse of underage girls. In June 2022, 
a New York court sentenced her to 20 years in prison. Her case has garnered widespread attention due to her high-profile connections and the severity of her crimes. 17. The Unabomber Theodore John Kaczynski, better known as the Unabomber, was a mathematician turned domestic terrorist from America. Born in 1942 in Chicago, Kaczynski was a child prodigy in mathematics who left his academic career in 1969 to live a primitive lifestyle. From 1978 to 1995, he orchestrated a series of attacks using mail bombs, targeting academics and business executives among others. His bombing campaign resulted in the deaths of three people and injuries to 23 others. Kaczynski chose to live in seclusion in a remote cabin near Lincoln, Montana from 1971, without electricity or running water. He penned a manifesto of 35,000 words titled, Industrial Society and Its Future, arguing that technology had distanced human beings from nature and advocated for a return to what he termed as wild nature. In 1995, Kaczynski sent a letter to the New York Times offering to desist from terrorism if the Times or the Washington Post published his manifesto. Both newspapers published the manifesto in full in September 1995. Kaczynski was arrested in April 1996, almost a year after his last acknowledged bombing. In 1998, he received a sentence of four life terms plus 30 years. Kaczynski was found dead in his cell on June 10, 2023, reportedly by suicide. He was 81 years old at the time of his death. 16. Keith Renier Keith Allen Renier, born on August 26, 1960, is a convicted American cult leader known for a series of crimes including human trafficking, sex offenses, and fraud. He is the co-founder of NXIVM, a company that claimed to offer personal development seminars and operated as a multi-level marketing organization. Based in Albany, New York, NXIVM was active from 1998 to 2018 and boasted a membership of 700 individuals at its peak, including several celebrities and wealthy individuals. Within the organization, Ranier was referred to as Vanguard. Experts in religious studies, law, and sociology have classified NXIVM as a cult. Mental health professionals and cult experts have described Ranier as a cult leader who manipulated his followers and exerted coercive control over them. His organization even involved physically branding women with what Ranier described as a rune, but was actually just his initials. The brand also held the initials of one of his highest level members, Alison Mack, an actress who was once popular on the CW's Smallville. Ranier has been accused of sexually abusing multiple women, including three who were underage at the time of the abuse. In 2018, reports of abuse related to a secret society within NXYVM, known as DOS, or The Vow, led to the arrests of Ranier and five other NXIVM associates. On June 19, 2019, a jury in the Eastern District of New York found Ranier guilty of racketeering for a series of crimes, including the sexual exploitation of a child, sex trafficking of women, and conspiracy to commit forced labor. The court received over 100 victim impact statements detailing the harm caused by Ranier. On October 27, 2020, Judge Nicholas Garofas sentenced Ranier to 120 years in prison and imposed a fine of $1.75 million. His case has attracted significant public attention due to his high-profile connections and the severity of his crimes. 15. Elizabeth Holmes Elizabeth Holmes, born on February 3, 1984, is a former American entrepreneur who founded and was the CEO of Theranos, a health technology company that has since ceased operations. Theranos gained significant attention after the company claimed to have revolutionized blood testing by developing testing methods that could use surprisingly small volumes of blood, such as from a finger prick. However, by 2015 to 2016, questions were raised about the validity of the company's technology and testing methods. In 2018, Holmes faced multiple fraud charges for misleading investors, government officials, and consumers about Theranos' blood testing technology. 
In 2022, she was found guilty on four counts of fraud. On May 30, 2023, Holmes reported to the federal prison camp in Bryan, Texas, to begin serving her 11-year sentence. Her prison sentence was reduced by two years in July 2023. 14. Jeffrey Dahmer Perhaps one of the world's most infamous serial killers, Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer, infamously known as the Milwaukee Cannibal, was particularly disturbed. Born on May 21, 1960 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Dahmer's reign of terror spanned from 1978 to 1991, during which he murdered 17 men and boys. His horrific crimes included sexual assault, necrophilia, and cannibalism. The shocking nature of Dahmer's crimes stunned the world and led to criticism of the local police department. Despite his plea of insanity, the court ruled that Dahmer was sane and found him guilty on 15 counts of murder. He was sentenced to 15 life terms, totaling 957 years in prison. On February 17, 1992, Dahmer was convicted for 15 of the 16 murders he committed in Wisconsin and received 15 life sentences. Later, he received an additional life sentence for a murder committed in Ohio in 1978. Dahmer's gruesome acts included having sex with his victims' corpses and retaining body parts of some victims, some of which he consumed. In November 1994, Dahmer and another inmate were beaten to death during a work detail. 13. Kyle Rittenhouse Kyle Rittenhouse, born in 2003, is an American who became a central figure in a widely publicized criminal case. On August 25, 2020, Rittenhouse, then a 17-year-old police enthusiast, was accused of shooting three people, killing two of them. His case became a flashpoint in national debates over gun rights, protests, and law enforcement. Rittenhouse had traveled from his home across the state border to Kenosha on that fateful night. The city was experiencing violent protests following the shooting of Jacob Blake, a black man, by a white police officer. Video footage captured by bystanders showed Rittenhouse, armed with a Smith & Wesson AR-style semi-automatic rifle, shooting and killing Joseph Rosenbaum, 36, and Anthony Huber, 26. He also wounded Gage Grosskreutz, 28. Rittenhouse claimed self-defense in the shootings. Prosecutors sought to portray him as an inexperienced teenager who misrepresented his age and medical training to other armed civilians in his group on the night of the shooting. On November 15, 2021, Rittenhouse was acquitted on all charges in his murder trial related to the shootings during the unrest in Kenosha in the summer of 2020. 12. Pablo Escobar Pablo Escobar, who was born into a humble family in a small village near Medellin, Colombia, had to abandon his education due to financial difficulties. His criminal career began with minor thefts, such as stealing gravestones from graveyards and reselling them. He later worked for a smuggler and became a millionaire by the age of 22. In 1975, Escobar orchestrated the assassination of Fabio Restrepo, the most influential drug lord in Medellin. His dominance over the drug trade expanded, and by 1982, he had been elected to Congress. At this point, Escobar controlled 80% of the global cocaine trade, and his estimated net worth was $25 billion. Despite his notorious criminal activities, he was seen as a hero by many Colombians. He funded the construction of churches, sports fields, and public parks. Many saw him as their own Robin Hood. However, his violent crimes are infamous. Thousands of innocent lives were lost due to orders given by Escobar and his associates. Escobar was relentless in his pursuit of power and wealth. He seemed indifferent to the consequences of his actions. To destabilize the police system as much as possible, Escobar began offering his hit men around $650 for each police officer they killed. By the end of 1993, an estimated 550 officers had been killed due to this bounty system. Escobar also punished those close to him. During a party at Escobar's home, one of his servants was caught stealing silverware. In response, Escobar had the man tied up and drowned in his swimming pool while all the guests watched. In 1989, Escobar's men planted a bomb on board Avianca Flight 203. The explosion killed all 107 passengers because Escobar thought Rivals or informants might be on board. In 1991, facing multiple drug charges, 
Escobar's lawyers came up with an unprecedented compromise. Escobar would build his own prison and choose his own guards. This lasted until 1992, when the public found out that Escobar tortured and murdered people inside his prison. The Colombian government decided to place Escobar in a real prison, but before they could act, Escobar disappeared. On December 2, 1993, police forces found Escobar hiding in a middle-class house in Medellin, where he took his own life on the roof. 11. Charles Manson Charles Manson, whose real name was Charles Mills Maddox, was born on November 12, 1934. He was a notorious American criminal and cult leader who spearheaded the Manson family, a California-based cult in the late 1960s. His birthplace was Cincinnati, Ohio, and he was born to a teenage mother. His early life was characterized by poverty and minor crimes, including a grocery store burglary in 1948. By the time he was 13, he had been convicted of armed robbery. In January 1955, Manson tied the knot with Rosalie Jean Willis, a hospital waitress. The couple had their first child, Charles Manson Jr. However, their marriage ended in divorce in 1958 after Manson was imprisoned for failing to appear in court on car theft charges. Manson's criminal activities took a turn for the worse when he relocated to California and met Mary Brunner, a librarian who would become the mother of his next child and his first follower. During the summer of love in 1967, he positioned himself as a self-proclaimed guru and attracted at least 18 women to his cause. Under Manson's guidance, his followers carried out a series of at least nine murders at four locations in July and August 1969. The most infamous of these was the murder of actress Sharon Tate and four others at her residence. Tate was eight and a half months pregnant at the time. In 1971, Manson was convicted of a conspiracy to commit murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. Despite his horrific crimes, aspects of his life story resonated with people. His troubled childhood, marked by poverty and time spent in reform schools, seemed to strike a chord with some. Charles Manson passed away on November 19, 2017. 10. Wesley Allen Dodd Wesley Allen Dodd was born on July 3, 1961 in Toppenish, Washington, and is infamous as an American serial killer and sex offender. Despite a non-abusive and generally normal upbringing, Dodd exhibited criminal tendencies from an early age. By his teenage years, he had started exposing himself to children in his neighborhood. His father was aware of this behavior, but largely overlooked it. As Dodd matured, his criminal activities intensified. He began molesting his younger cousins and then children in his neighborhood whom he offered to babysit. At the tender age of 15, Dodd was apprehended for indecent exposure, but was released with a recommendation for counseling for juveniles. In the year 1989, Dodd committed sexual assault and took the lives of three young boys in Vancouver, Washington. Later that year, he was taken into custody following an unsuccessful attempt to kidnap a six-year-old boy at a cinema. Dodd maintained a diary where he penned down detailed accounts of his murders, which was later discovered by law enforcement. After confessing to the murder charges, Dodd was sentenced to death. He declined an automatic appeal and was executed by hanging on January 5, 1993. This event marked the first legal hanging in the United States since 1965. 9. The Zodiac Killer The Zodiac Killer, an anonymous American serial killer, was active in Northern California in the late 1960s. The case is often referred to as the most infamous unsolved murder case in American history. The Zodiac is known to have killed five victims in the San Francisco Bay Area between December 1968 and October 1969. His attacks took place in various settings, including rural, urban, and suburban areas. He targeted young couples and a single male taxi driver. His known attacks occurred in Benicia, Vallejo, unincorporated Napa County, and the city of San Francisco. Two of his victims survived their injuries. The Zodiac claimed to have killed 37 people. He has been connected to several other unsolved cases, some of which occurred in Southern California or outside the state. The killer adopted the name Zodiac in a series of letters and cards he sent to local newspapers, threatening more killings and bombings if they were not published. 
Some of these letters contained cryptograms or ciphers, in which the killer claimed he was collecting his victims as slaves for the afterlife. Of the four ciphers he created, two remain unsolved, and one was only deciphered in 2020. While many theories have been proposed regarding the identity of the killer, the only suspect ever publicly identified by authorities was Arthur Lee Allen, a former elementary school teacher and convicted sex offender who passed away in 1992. Although the Zodiac stopped sending letters around 1974, the unique nature of the case has continued to generate international interest over the years. 8. A.L. Capone Al Capone, born in 1899 in Brooklyn, New York, was a feared American mobster who ruled over Chicago's organized crime scene from 1925 to 1931. He left school by the age of 12 and became a member of the powerful Five Points Gang in Lower Manhattan. Around 1920, he moved to Chicago to join Johnny Torrio, who had become a prominent figure in the Colosimo mob. Capone earned a formidable reputation during the brutal gang rivalries of the era, battling to gain and maintain control over several areas of Chicago. His criminal empire encompassed gambling, prostitution, bootlegging, bribery, narcotics trafficking, robbery, protection rackets, and murder. At the height of his reign as a crime boss, Capone's organization generated revenue equivalent to over $1 billion annually. Capone was known for his brutal acts of violence, primarily against other mobsters. The most notorious of these was the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929 when he ordered the execution of seven rival gang members. Capone was never charged for his racketeering activities, but was eventually prosecuted for income tax evasion in 1931. He was tried, found guilty, and sentenced to 11 years in prison. He served time in the Atlanta Penitentiary and Alcatraz before being released in 1939. He was released in 1939 for treatment of late-stage syphilis and died in 1947 after suffering a stroke. 7. Andrew Cunanan Andrew Cunanan, born on August 31, 1969 in National City, California, was a notorious American serial killer who took the lives of five individuals over a span of three months from April 27 to July 15, 1997. His victims included renowned Italian fashion designer Gianni Versace and Lee Miglin, a prominent real estate developer in Chicago. Cunanan spent his early years in San Diego, California, he was the youngest of four siblings and was viewed as the standout child in the family. In third grade, Cunanan's IQ was measured at 147, indicating exceptional intelligence for his age. During his teenage years, he attended the Bishop's School, one of the country's leading college preparatory schools. After completing high school, he pursued a major in American history at the University of California, San Diego. However, his life took a drastic turn when his father deserted the family in 1988. His father, a stockbroker by profession, fled to the Philippines amidst allegations of embezzling $100,000. This incident had a profound impact on Cunanan, leading him to drop out of college and relocate to San Francisco's Castro District, known for its vibrant LGBTQ culture. Cunanan turned to male prostitution, targeting affluent older men. He also began committing thefts to fund his drug habit. He developed an obsession with violent pornography and even appeared in some films. Over time, he underwent a transformation and became an insecure and aggressive individual. In the three months leading up to Versace's murder, Cunanan had committed four other murders in a nationwide killing spree. A month before the crime took place, he had been added to the FBI's most wanted list. Cunanan's life came to an end on July 23, 1997, when he took his own life as Miami police were closing in on him. 6. Alex Murdaugh Alex Murdaugh, a former lawyer hailing from a prominent legal family in South Carolina's Low Country, came under the spotlight in July 2022 when he was implicated in the murders of his wife Maggie and their youngest son, Paul. According to authorities, the double homicide triggered a series of events including an ill-conceived murder-for-hire scheme that Murdaugh had planned for his remaining son, Buster, to collect on his life insurance policy. 
Investigations revealed that Murdaugh was involved in numerous financial crimes at his law firm. Murdaugh has since been stripped of his legal license and stands accused of misappropriating nearly $8.5 million from his clients at his law firm. In addition to facing close to 100 criminal charges, Murdoch is also the focus of the Netflix documentary, Murdo Murders, A Southern Scandal. On September 21, 2023, Alex Murdaugh admitted to federal fraud and money laundering charges. In March, he was handed a life sentence after being found guilty in the double murder of his wife and son. His defense team lodged a court motion in September, demanding a new trial and alleging jury tampering by a clerk of court. 5. Michael Adam Burr Michael Adam Burr, born on August 31, 1969, is an American felon who was implicated in the killing of Mary Prior in 1997. Prior, an 88-year-old resident of Lennon, Michigan, was found deceased and wrapped in a blanket approximately 200 yards, about 180 meters, from her residence. The autopsy report revealed that she had been suffocated and had sustained head injuries. Burr was apprehended in 2021, almost 24 years after the incident. A DNA sample collected from Burr shortly after the crime was stored until 2021, when the Michigan State Police Crime Lab utilized more sophisticated techniques than those available in 1997 to connect him to samples retrieved from the crime scene. In December 2022, Burr admitted to charges of second-degree murder and first-degree criminal sexual conduct. In return for his plea, the prosecution agreed to drop a kidnapping charge against him. His plea deal stipulates a prison sentence of 10 to 20 years and lifelong monitoring as a sex offender. 4. H. H. Holmes, Herman Webster Mudgett, widely recognized as Dr. Henry Howard Holmes, or H. H. Holmes, was a notorious American fraudster and serial killer who operated between 1891 and 1894. Born on May 16, 1861, in Gilmanton, New Hampshire, Holmes had an extensive criminal history that encompassed insurance fraud, forgery, swindling, illegal bigamous marriages, horse theft, and murder. His most infamous crimes were committed in Chicago around the time of the World's Columbian Exposition in 1893. Despite confessing to 27 murders, including some individuals who were verifiably alive, Holmes was found guilty and sentenced to death for only one murder, that of his business associate and accomplice, Benjamin Pitizel. It is speculated that he also murdered three of Pitizel's children, three mistresses, one mistress's child, and the sister of another mistress. Holmes was executed by hanging on May 7, 1896. Much of the mythology surrounding Holmes pertains to the so-called Murder Castle, a three-story building he commissioned in Chicago. Many details about the building and his alleged crimes are considered to be exaggerated or fabricated for sensationalistic tabloid pieces. Holmes provided various inconsistent accounts of his life, initially claiming innocence and later alleging that he was possessed by Satan. His tendency to lie has made it challenging for researchers to determine the truth based on his statements. 3. E.D. Gein Edward Gein, a notorious figure in American crime history, was born in La Crosse and lived a secluded life with his mother in their rundown farmhouse. His mother's death plunged him into a state of extreme loneliness and isolation, which further twisted his already disturbed mind, leading him down a path of murder, grave desecration, and other heinous acts. In 1957, Gaines' gruesome activities were exposed when it was discovered that he had been exhuming bodies and keeping them as macabre keepsakes. He admitted to the killings of two women, Bernice Worden and Mary Hogan. The subsequent investigation unveiled a horrifying pattern of grave desecration. Gein was charged with first-degree murder, but pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. He was deemed mentally unfit for trial and was committed to the Central State Hospital for the criminally insane. Later, he was moved to the Mendota State Hospital in Madison, Wisconsin. He passed away in a mental institution in 1984. 2. Willard Miller and Jeremy Goodale Willard Noble, Chaden Miller, and Jeremy Everett Goodale, both 16, 
are two Iowa-based teenagers who stand accused of the brutal murder of their high school Spanish teacher, Nohima Graber, who was 66 years old. The incident reportedly occurred in November 2021. The pair allegedly used a baseball bat to kill Graber and later discussed the details of the crime on social media. Graber's body was discovered hidden beneath a tarp, a wheelbarrow, and railroad ties. Miller is said to have confessed to supplying the wheelbarrow from his own residence. Both teenagers have entered pleas of not guilty to the charges of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. They are facing trial as adults. This case has garnered widespread attention due to the severity of the crime and the young age of the accused. Court documents indicate that they were complicit in planning, carrying out, and disposing of evidence related to their teacher's murder. 1. The Night Stalker Richard Ramirez, infamously known as the Night Stalker, was a notorious serial killer in America. Born in 1960 in El Paso, Texas, his life spiraled into darkness following his mother's demise. His reign of terror began in 1984 and continued until August 1985. Ramirez was infamous for his savage and indiscriminate attacks. He faced charges for a litany of crimes including murder, sexual assault, and burglary. His victims were of varying ages, and he employed an array of weapons such as handguns, knives, a machete, a tire iron, and a claw hammer. He was also known to degrade his victims by forcing them to declare their love for Satan. His spree of terror concluded on August 31, 1985, when he was finally captured. In 1989, Ramirez was found guilty of 13 murders, five attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. He was sentenced to death, but passed away in prison in 2013 while on death row. Well, that's all we have for today. If you liked today's video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Be sure to check out our page and watch more videos as well. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one. We will see you in the next one. We will see you in the next one. We will see you in the next one.